Anthony Hartwig here with a Lakeview Volleyball Player Profile. I'm joined by Tara Lytle. Tara, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. And when you, when you talk about Lakeview Volleyball, it's just the one word that pops out is dominance. You guys have been so dominant, especially in the NE8 over the last two years, the existence of the conference. What is it about this volleyball team that, that lets it have success last? Um, our volleyball team has a lot of energy and we know how to work together. Um, and we've all been like playing for so many years together. So we like work well and our coaches are very good and they help us through a lot of things. Now you're one of the younger players, just a sophomore this year. So you're coming into a program that's already as successful. What was that like coming in last year, knowing the success that Lakeview has had and, and trying to kind of live up to, to the success of the program? Um, there was kind of a lot of pressure. I was kind of nervous because I didn't want to mess up and I wanted to like fit in as best as I could. But once the year went on, it just like the whole team just works well together and it's so nice to everyone. And they just like welcome you. Yeah, how, how well have you kind of gelled into this team that's a mixture? They got senior leadership, got a couple of juniors, but then you have some young talent too. How has it been like gelling with, with everyone on the team? Um, our whole team um, is very nice to everyone and we all have been friends for like years. And so it's kind of just a fun time when we're all together and playing on the court and we all know how to work with one another. And it feels like Lakeview kind of travels under the radar a little bit with, with how good uh, your team is. Do you guys kind of get this sense that like there's not a lot of pressure on you guys because not a lot of people outside of the program know just how good you are? Yeah, I mean, our conference like isn't very big. So it's kind of like no one really knows about us other than like the few teams that we play in the conference. So yeah, just kind of like doesn't, yeah. <laughs> You have forced the conference to know about you guys because you guys have only lost one uh, conference game in the last two years. What's it like going through a conference like that? I mean, there's a lot of good programs in there, but you guys dominate it. What's it like trying to keep that success every night? You kind of cut out when you were talking. Um, Lakeview, everyone <laughs> in the conference has to know who you guys are because you guys have been so dominant. You've won uh, all but one match in the NE8 in its existence. Um, what's it like going through that conference and trying to keep that standard every night, every time you go out and play a conference or, uh, opponent? Um, it has a lot of pressure on us because we want to keep winning and we want to – keep winning like the whole conference and keep dominating all the teams that we already have. But we just have to keep working like as hard as we do and in practice. And even when we're not in practice to still like work together as a team on the court. This summer was full of uncertainty. We didn't even know if there was going to be a volleyball season. So how did you guys kind of stay mentally ready for the season during the times of uncertainty? At first, um, our coaches just told us to do like workouts at home and like run on our own. And she would like check in on us and make sure we were doing them. But then we set up a Zoom call every, I think it was two days a week and we would do workouts on Zoom together. And then she would have us run on Saturdays. What, uh, what were some personal goals you set for yourself coming into this season? Um, to keep on working as hard as I have been and to improve on every, like, in ev not just, like, my hitting, but, like, passing because I know that I don't play all the way around. So I want to keep trying to improve that so maybe one day that I can. When you talk about volleyball, you know, you, there's not a lot of room to adjust during the season because you guys have three or four matches a week. There's not a lot of time to get into the gym for practices during the week. So 
what's it like um, trying to adjust on the fly? Maybe if you don't do something so well on Tuesday, you have to come out and adjust in a match on Wednesday what you're doing. What's that kind of like? It's kind of like a mental – like you have to mentally try to fix yourself. And if you don't, like, keep – keep working on it, then it's never going to happen. And you're just going to keep being down on yourself when you're working on the court. And then you'll bring like the whole team down because you bring yourself down. Have you, so you have, keep working. Have you found as a volleyball player that you have to have kind of a sense of coaching yourself because you don't have, you know, a coach in practice saying, Hey, I watched film. This is what you're doing wrong. You have to notice what you kind of are, are, struggling with and then fix it yourself in the next match yeah you have to like know what you want to fix with like your like your form of hitting or something and you have to try to like tell yourself to fix it and like just keep on working on it until you do fix it and then consistently like talk about uh, your coaching staff and the success that they've been able to have and what it's been like being under them and and letting them kind of let you grow as a person and, and as a hitter um well my head coach um believes in all of us and she helps us through everything and our assistant coach is my sister so working with her is like I guess more fun because she knows me and knows how I like work and stuff so she can help me figure out things I'm doing wrong we got to talk about that dynamic I mean assistant coach is your sister what's that kind of like what's that relationship like I mean I I'm, I'm assuming that you get to talk volleyball uh from a coach's in a player perspective uh, a little bit more than everyone else on the team yeah um it's a lot of fun having my sister as the assistant coach just because I do get to like talk to her about things that I would probably not normally feel comfortable like talking to my head coach with and she does like tell me things that probably someone wouldn't want to tell me in like a coaching perspective so yeah it's a lot of fun because me and my sister are close so. I think watching Lakeview and and looking at your stats so far this season one of the things you gotta talk about sometimes it goes under the radar is the setter you guys have in Maggie Pavlansky I mean um, one of the more aggressive setters in the area and uh, she's got a lot of hitters to work with what's it like getting set by her and what's the uh, setter hitter kind of relationship like at Lakeview? Um, Me and Maggie have been playing together since seventh grade so we have like a good like setter hitter bond because she always knows like how I like my sets but even if like her set is off, like I can tell her what to do to try to fix it and then she'll fix it and then the set will be good. And that goes along with all the other players too. They have a good bond with her because we've all been playing together for so long. Guys, do we have senior leadership? Only two seniors, but they're pretty good leaders in their own right, Anna and Mara. Um, talk about what they bring to uh, the team as far as a leadership perspective and, and what it's going to be like uh, when you kind of have to say goodbye to them after uh, the season's over? Um, Anna and Mara are very good, like, energetic leaders, and they they can tell when someone gets down on themselves, so they pick them back up, and they can they know how to get us to work as a team. And Anna is just always talking and always having a good time, so it just makes everyone else, like, have a good time. And same with Mara. She's just always excited to be there. And when they do leave, it will be us. I feel like we'll need to work on energy a lot more next year, losing them. As important as they are, does it excite you as a younger player that there's only two seniors and it's not a team that's has to, you know, replace eight players or, or six players like some teams in the area? The core of Lakeview will still be back for, for the next couple of years. Yeah, only having two seniors is – like I guess better because we're not going to lose as many people next year so we won't have like as much to work on next year because we'll already like be together as a team but we will definitely like still need to work on a lot of things when they leave next year because they're a big part of our team. When you guys got the green light that there was going to be a volleyball season you guys finally got to work together as a team what were some goals that you guys set as a team that you wanted to make sure that you checked off the list this year? 
as a team, we wanted to make sure every game was as good as we can get it and make it as fun as possible because we never knew when our last game could have been. And we wanted to keep on improving and like winning and having fun in practice just because we didn't know when it was when it could get shut down again. Your home gym has a very old school kind of homey feel to it. What's it like playing at home there? Uh, it's got to be a big home field, home court advantage because it's not, it's very unique in the way that it's set up. So what, what's it like playing at Lakeview? Um, it's very hot because we don't have air in our gym, but also we've all got like used to playing in the heat and it's kind of fun just to know that you're on your home court and like we all just love playing in that gym together. And we also do kind of have an advantage when we're at home because usually all the other schools have air and we don't and we're used to that, but other people aren't. When, uh, when you go to a gym that does have air, does it feel extra cold because you guys are so used to the heat? Yeah, it does. It's very, it's a very nice um, break when we get to play in schools that have air because we're not as sweaty. <laughs> What uh, what makes you kind of proud that you get to put on the Lakeview jersey and you go to Lakeview and you're, you're a part of that community? Um, makes me like proud because I've been going to Lakeview like my whole life and I've looked up to all the volleyball players like throughout the years and now it's like I get to put on a jersey and I get to go play and just, like support like Lakeview and I'm on the team and it's I think it's pretty cool now looking back at like when I was little and I really wanted to be a volleyball player. I like how you brought up that you looked up to the volleyball players of the past as you were coming up through this program. Who were some players on the varsity level while you were growing up that kind of, you know, caught your eye that you wanted to kind of mold yourself like them or, or inspired you to, to be a Lakeview volleyball player? Well, there's both of my sisters, Lainey and Haley Lytle. Um, I looked up to them a lot, obviously, because they were my sisters, but then all of their friends, like Annie Pavlansky and Jensen Soba, I looked up to them because I knew I was trying to be as good as them and to lead volleyball when they had all left. So far, what are your favorite memories with uh, Lakeview Volleyball that you've kind of collected? Um, winning the conference last year was definitely a very fun experience to learn, especially being on varsity as a freshman. It was very fun to experience like winning the whole conference. That was probably the best memory. Tara, with all of our player profiles, we like to give the players a uh, chance to thank all the people that support them and all the people that kind of make them who they are. So the floor is yours to thank whoever it is that you really want to thank. Um, I'd like to thank my two coaches that co have coached me throughout my years and all the ones in seventh and eighth grade and all my family that supports me throughout everything and tells me that I do good in every game, brings me to practices and just in general, all of my teammates and my friends that support me and go to my games. All right, before we let you go, we always like to have some fun at the end and, and try to get to know these players a little bit more. So what's, uh, what's your favorite uh, post-game meal that, that really, uh, you know, you like to put in your stomach after a hard-fought match? Um, our whole, well, sometimes after our games, our whole team will go to El Torero and, like, just bond as a team after games and have fun. So that's probably one of the more fun and good meals that I will eat after a game. Do you have any uh, pregame routines or superstitions that you kind of have to keep to to make sure that you play well? Um, I have to make sure that I'm not just like laying in bed all day because then I will not do good at all. <laughs> uh, what's make, your what's your pregame playlist like? What 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 kind of music gets you hyped up and ready to go? Um, we have a lot of like old like not like rap but like pop songs that we've learned and like played with the past years and it just gets us all happy and excited to be there and play. Um, during quarantine, when we all had to stay in the house for a couple of months, what was your favorite in-home quarantine activity? Um, probably 
to watch Netflix in my bed all day and like yeah I love it what what's you know, what's been what was the favorite Netflix quarantine show that you binge um probably Grey's Anatomy there you go it's got a lot of seasons so it's gonna keep you busy yeah. Tara thank you so much for joining us today it was great to talk to you and we look forward to see what you do the rest of the season and the rest of your career and we'll talk to you again real soon thank you for having me